Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to FC24 Career Mode. Hello, nice to see you. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. That would be much appreciated on that journey towards 50 thousand subscribers let's get this out the way shall we it's a career mode video it's a new series it's a series in which since the year 2017 i haven't had a great track record with i've not went past three episodes in god knows how long however this year things are different i'm no longer a university student i no longer have a job on the side this is it this is me now i need to make a living doing youtube and part of that is by bringing you content like this on that note, I've not quite figured out yet what I want to do with this and how I want to run things. Part of me wants to do it on this channel, but I know a lot of you will be clicking on this going, Ryan, this isn't what we watch you for. Talk about Celtic. There's nothing to talk about today. There is bugger all. It's it, nothing. No news whatsoever. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. The new game is out. We should may as well. Um, however, uh, I don't know if I'm going to... continue continue doing it on this channel i'm going to put the premiere for episode one on here on ryan 118 and then when we continue the series at some point we may switch over to the second channel which is linked in my description or we might take it to twitch slash live streaming and play it live i've not quite figured it out yet however i decided why not let's just get episode one premiered and out the way and let's do it where most people are gonna know it's happening so then on that note we have got the new game, we have got no longer FIFA, FC24, and we are ready to play it. Here we are. We're in the new game now, as you can see, it looks different uh, at first glance. Trust me, on the surface, it's pretty much the same game. Um, and we're going to start that new career mode today. We're going to go back into playing as Celtic. Celtic Park is now in the game, so we're going to see that. Today is going to be mostly setting up the career mode, having a look at the squad and getting into pre-season a little bit and having a look at all the new features. So you're going to be basically learning the game with me. I have played a little bit of it, um, not too much of it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we are right now. I'm still awful. I am still terrible at the game. So you're going to have to bear with me as I learn how to get better. Reality is I haven't, played FIFA slash EAFC religious, religiously in a long time, in years. The last time I actually played the game altogether was probably about a year ago when we done the charity live stream, if you remember the channel. I've not touched it since then. I'm a football manager, man, you know me. But because Celtic Park's in the game, because so many are desperate for me to bring it back, because of that, I've decided why not. We are going to play as Brendan Rodgers because he is one of the few managers to have a face in the game. We've also got uh, Mole Man here who looks nothing like him nobody in the spfl has uh, their faces as a manager but that doesn't matter because we're not going to be playing in scotland yep once again we're going to be moving celtic down to england on that note brendan rogers you need a new tie you need a lovely green tie a nice celic tie you know, let's please the dads. But we are going to be moving celtic and rangers around we usually do this on fifa look it's not football manager um, it's it's EAFC and if you play EAFC career mode you'll know fine well that playing in Scotland isn't really that fun you don't even get the League Cup so you're stuck with the two domestic competitions rather than three you can't even win a treble um, and also nobody's like licensed so there's no player faces there's no stadiums apart from Celtic Park and Ibrox and it's just not great it's not, and, and that, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame, but it is what it is. So we're going to move Sheffield United and Luton, two of the new promoted sides, into the Scottish Premiership, and we're going to take Celtic and Rangers down the road once again. And as you can see here, $45 million to spend. Uh, I'm roughly going to be around £35, £40 million. Pounds. We are coming into this league to try and stay up on the first time round, that's that's my minimum expectation for myself anyway. I don't know what Peter Lawwell's saying yet. It does mean that we will need to sacrifice our space in European football. Uh, we can't play there. For some reason, Cork City 
have replaced us in the Champions League rather than a team from Scotland. Uh, rest in peace. Yeah, a, a half a star side in there with Lazio, Atletico and, and Feyenoord. So we are going to have to miss that out on the first time round. Rangers also dropping out of the Europa League. They have been replaced by somebody. Um, so yeah, I were not in the Champions League, sadly, not this time round. But, we, you know, we want to try and build towards that. We eventually want to be in there. But Brendan Rodgers is in charge. It's time to start this career. It's not quite football manager. It doesn't have the same tactical depth that that beautiful game does. However, they have added something new. So you set your tactical vision for the side and you get a few default options. You get standard, you get wing play, tiki taka, gig impression, park the bus, counter attack and kick and rush. These are all the default play styles that, that you're allowed to choose from. Now, if it was me that was in charge of Celtic, I would be going for gig impression. That's probably the one that I, I like the most, the one that I pretty much tickles my fancy. What tickles Brendan Rodgers' fancy isn't exactly here, safe to say. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm not giving any Brendan Rodgers slant, they're not here, you know me. Um, I don't know what would be the closest thing to Rodgers, because it's not kick and rush, it's not counter, it's not park the bus. Wouldn't say it's gig and pressing. Tiki attack is maybe a bit of a, there's not really any, it's probably standard, isn't it? But I'm going to go for gig and pressing, even though I am playing as Brendan Rodgers, um, because yeah. And then this is one of the other new things you get now, is coaches. Uh, you now hire coaches who come in for periods over a certain amount of time, and they train your players to get better. So it's something that's never been in the game before, as you can see, you can sort it by the most expensive to the cheapest coaches. The most expensive is actually quite shit. I'd be better off with Kenny Miller and Chris Boyd training my team. Ethan, you're rotten. Um, I, I, I don't really care for now, so I'm just going to hire one to get it over and done with. There's a pretty good coach here, Gabriel Humphrey. You can come in and you can fix up our defence, thanks. So essentially, you get this interface which shows you how players are adapting to the system that you're playing. And a 4-2-3-1, Dyson Maeda, Matt O'Reilly and Lee Labada are very negatively affected because they aren't playing in their natural positions so we're going to have to toy about with that I don't want to play a 4-2-3-1 anyway and in, 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 in these games it always seems like they're a bit too negative and it's difficult to get goals so I'm probably going to change to 4-3-3 uh, but we have got a defensive coach in who's already boosting Johnson, Lagavirka, Skills and Taylor that of course won't be our starting back four especially in the Premier League but yeah basically that's what these coaches it's, it's a lot of nonsense really it, it, it is it's like they're trying to make the game better but they don't care that much because trust me I've played a bit of career mode it's not that great so I've went ahead and spent quite a bit of money on wages for coaches I want at least one in every department from now just so that everywhere's getting a bit of a boost um, I'm not wanting to just keep it top heavy in any areas so I've hired at least one coach for now we'll see how much money we've got after the transfer window and we might come in and hire coaches you can have up to three in each area but for now that's going to do it to be honest, it's just a crime. Where's Gavin? Where's John Kennedy? 10-game Kennedy. Where's Harry Q? Stevie Woods? Where is my normal coaches? That's what I don't get. You could, Why not try and make the game a bit more realistic and give you the real coaches at the side to build on? Like you do in Football Manager. Why? Who is Simon Cork? Yes, Cork. And Gabriel Humphrey. And yeah, just give me Stevie Woods, man. There he is, look at that, the Broge, Broge won, love that, I'm going to get that in the back of my shirt this season. <laughs> so uh, there we go, Brendan Rodgers is in, uh, the, the, yeah, we're, we're ready to go now, should we, shall we have a look at the squad then and see the ratings that it's given everybody in this year's game. Let's do a quick run through, a roster rundown, we've got Joe Hart whose contract expires in 12 months, he's 73 rated this year, we do need to sign a better goalkeeper, that's one thing that's a priority. Scott Bain, who looks more like a Love Island contestant than Scott Bain. He's there at overall 66. Benjamin Segrist. Is it just me or does Segrist look like really small? I feel like he's taller than that. I don't know. Benjamin Segrist is 69 rated. Greg Taylor. He's a 75 this year, which isn't bad at all. We've got Alexandro Bernabe, who... Yeah, he's here. Uh, Montgomery's out on loan. Cameron Carter Vickers, one of the few Celtic players with a face in the game. 76 rated, not bad. Apparently got good potential as well this year, so he will be used. Nat Phillips, 73 rated. Another guy with some form of face that's meant to be like his. 
I think it's a bit outdated. Uh, Kobayashi, who's 66 rated. Liam Scales, 66. <laughs> Look at Liam Scales. What is that? Jesus. Liam, God, I've done you dirty. Jesus. Uh, Mike Navrovsky, who's in at 68 rated. Gustav Lagerbelka, who's 67 rated. And then there's Bolson Lawalu on loan, of course, to Fleetwood Town as well. Now, the centre halves aren't great in this game, are they? Like, uh, we've got Cameron Cutter Vickers, who's 76, and he's good enough. The rest of them, I don't think they will be in this game. Uh, Ralston, 69 rated. He's in there as the backup to Alistair Johnson. 75, McGregor up there at nearly 80 rated this year, and his stats are actually really, really good as well, so he will be useful, granted, I don't know who that is, it ain't Callum McGregor, uh, we've got Tomoki Iwata at 72, uh, Quan, who, yeah, Quan, <laughs> David Turnbull, whose hairline is quickly receding, uh, he's going to be bald before we know it, Matt O'Reilly, who has a face and he looks as gorgeous as he does in real life, Beautiful big bastard there, 75. Odin Thiago Holm, who hopefully has great potential, but is very low rated to start off with. Liam Shaw and Lowen. Rio Hitati, who will be really important in this Premier League season. Sead Haksabanovic, who has got a face. My guy, Haksa, who is at Stoke. So that's great. See how he gets on in the season there. And he might have a future here. Who knows? Dyson Maeda at 74. Luis Palma, who doesn't even have a render for his image. That puts me off using a player because I'm really OCD like that. Uh, yeah, doubt I'm going to be using him that much for that reason. James Forrest, who is still here uh, at the right page of 31. Yang, 68 rated. Liel Abada, 74 rated, who I have used in kickoff mode and is very good. Rocco Vata, Kyogo, who's in at 77. Uh, granted, does not look like Kyogo. He's got the hair. And that's about it. And then we've got O and Johnny Kenny as well. Johnny Kenny, 61 rated. What a player. Um, but I So yeah, a lot of young players, a lot of players who aren't going to be quite Premier League quality to start off with. But we know the Celtic squad but now and, and that's what we've got in this game. On that note, I think it's time that we get real with things and maybe look at some players who are willing to either loan out or sell. And they will be guys towards this bottom end. Like Yuki Kobayashi is going to get absolutely nowhere near my team. Whether he wants to leave or not is a different story. Quan, he's going to be nowhere near it. And this isn't how I would assess things in real life. I wouldn't just be papping these guys out the door. But let's be real. The, in, in this game, in the Premier League, they ain't going to be doing nothing for me. So, yeah, I want backups in the areas... Um, and yeah, some of these guys just, just ain't it, really. So we'll see what offers come in. Let's go and have a look at my starting 11. Right, here we are. I've sorted out what is right now my best starting 11. And as you can see for the Premier League, the depth is probably just not going to be good enough in this game. I can't be playing Chelsea, Manchester. Why did I use Chelsea as the first example? Chelsea who could arguably be relegated this season. I, mean, I can't be playing Man City and Arsenal and Spurs and all the rest of it with like 68 and 69 rated players as my defensive backup and 69 rated Luis Palma as my backup. Not right now, I'm not too confident enough for that. So yeah, this is the 11 I'm going with. There's areas which evidently need to be focused on first. I think defensively, we need to get a keeper. Uh, we need to get maybe a centre half. Um, and then maybe, you know, maybe loan some of the younger guys out, like Scales, or, or even like Lagerbelka, you know, loan these guys out, bring in some better quality to join Vickers, and then maybe try and focus on what we can do up the park. So on that note, this is the areas that I've asked my scouts to prioritise over the next few weeks in pre-season. Goalkeeper, left-back, centre-back, and then I've just put attacker in general because I need wingers. I think the strongest area we have right now is the central midfield players. McGregor, O'Reilly, Hitati, Turnbull. Um, I don't think that needs to be prioritised at this moment in time. So I've sent players, or sorry, scouts off to look for players in England, Italy, France and Germany. Uh, so hopefully we hear back from then very soon. I think they've already got a, a few players in their scout reports that they would like me to look at. No, I don't see any now actually. Maybe they're, maybe they're gone. Maybe they're gone. There was players. They, they seem to be gone. Oh, there we go. Scott McKenna. No. Off the top of my head, there's four players who I'm automatically interested in and in bringing to Celtic to try and make the side better. So these are four players I've requested my scouts to start looking at. I think one of the priorities is going to be your man Kelleher from, from Liverpool who would be a fantastic Joe Hart replacement 
obviously a lot of Celtic fans want him in real life as well so it would be good if we could bring him in so we've started scouting to see what would maybe be the overall we're looking at the money we're looking at Fabiano Parisi is someone else who I like the look of as a left back uh, however he has just joined Fiorentina in real life so that might be a bit difficult to pull off this season but with Greg Taylor already being 75 rated is it one that we could maybe wait on potentially so just the same as Destiny Udogi as well who's someone who I would really like to to maybe bring in he's been really impressive for Ange's Spurs so far and because he won't be too high rated in this maybe somebody we could potentially look at and finally another Irish international yes let's just sign the Irish national team shall we uh Evan Ferguson who I don't need to say much more about um I also like to sign players who do have game faces so that kind of puts me off Parisi and Yudogi a little bit but I'm not gonna get picky we are Celtic in the Premier League we're in a, a big pawn now um and we'll need to shop smart so face or not who who cares really just to clarify, our transfer budget now is £36 million, so obviously it did say $45 million, yeah, not as much as that when you convert it over, so uh, £36 million, with that I would like to understand my objectives for the season, because we are obviously in the Premier League, manager popularity is moderate. That's box office broads for you, baby. Uh, youth development, they want me to sign two young players and four academy players over the course of the season. Uh, this season, they want to sign one crucial first-team player assigned to a forward position. So hopefully we can bring in a wigger, or maybe Evan Ferguson, but we've got Kyogo. Uh, sell two players and sign two crucial players to replace them. Okay, right, that's that's low priority, to be fair, so we don't need to worry about that. Critical, uh, avoid relegation, reach the last 16 of the FA Cup and within four seasons win the Premier League. There's our task then, ladies and gents. Within four seasons we have to win the Premier League. We've always said that if, if we get sent to England within a, f a couple of seasons you'd like to be challenging. So, yeah. A transfer offer for Burnaby. Oh, you love to see it. Yes, leave. Alexandro, leave. Hopefully he accepts it. He doesn't knock it down. Genoa is not a bad move. Transfer windows open. Uh, Scouts, Youth Academy. We'll look at the Youth Academy at some point. Doesn't really matter right now. Uh, we have got a first scout report. Okay, they've started. They, we've got a few names that we'll probably look at. <laughs> Sack it, behave yourself. Uh, we'll look at as the episodes go. For God's sake, why are we scouting Rangers players? Why, and especially duds like Matondo and Lammers and, and, and McKenna, thanks, let's, let's avoid. Um, so we'll have a look at that, give me ideas of who you think I should sign as well in the, in the comments section. Um, but player chats, Quan, uh, listen, I'm looking at options, mate, I'm looking at options. There's Cal Mack, yep, good to meet you too, son, and uh, Burnaby who is, is out the door, so yeah. And as for the first episode, I think that's as far as we will go today. Um, we have got a pre-season tournament invite to get at some point, so we will have a look at that. We will see what the situation is with who we're playing. We are, of course, in the Premier League, so hopefully in episode two, we'll be right into the thick of things. We'll be right into starting the Premier League season, and hopefully we'll have some updates on transfers. But let me know who you think we should sign in the comments below, and hopefully there's a few players we can bring in. Here is our start to the season, by the way. A tough start with a way to Brighton uh, and a way to Chelsea in the opening month, but we do have a home game at Celtic Park against Burnley, so hopefully that goes okay. And then after that, going into month two, the run's okay. Uh, I think that that's quite a decent wee run we've got. A tough month there, but we'll get through the... Oh my, that's a busy December, that, isn't it? We've got our first derby in December. Uh, close to the, the actual traditional New Year derby, but sadly not then. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it with Celtic Park being in the game, of course. Uh, but for today, that's going to do it. We are going to wrap it up there. So sorry there's been no gameplay or anything like that, or no sort of images of Celtic Park yet. But trust me, it's coming. And that's why you've just got to wait for episode two. And while nothing's happening this week, who knows? It might be as soon as tomorrow. So thank you for watching the introductory episode. Thank you for uh, spending some time with me. If it's not your cup of tea sorry but thank you like and subscribe i'll see you all next time